Just left the shop, honey, and they tell me my oil light keep coming on again. And they telling me that my oil pump might be going out or my oil sensor light or something like that, child. But y'all, let's pray. Let's pray, you two. I'm going to lay my hands on my car. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you continue to let this car run, Lord, because you know we cannot replace this car, this oil pump, Lord. Father, I'm asking your spirit to get up under this hood, God, and do a new thing in this oil pump, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. If he can save a soul, he can renew an oil pump. Ain't that right? That's right. All right, family. I'm getting ready to see y'all in a little bit. Mm. All right, y'all. Hey, everybody. So I'm just leaving. Um, I got my oil change in my car, and um, my oil light was steady coming on after I got my oil changed. Oh no. So I had these people here at the um, Walmart's where I went and got my oil changed at. And um, y'all see we just had a word of prayer. Cause baby, I can't buy no oil pump for this, this car. And I don't want to get another one because I don't want no car payment every 30 days. Anywho. It's, it's, it's hot today, and I got on this sweater, honey. I'm getting ready to go to Sonic's. And I'm going to get me one of them pretzel sticks, and I'm going to get me a, um, I hope this video ain't upside down. I'm going to get me a pretzel stick and I'm going to get me one of them ices. That's what I want. I need to dye my hair because it's going to slap gray again. But into who? Mm. That language, that language. What's everybody been doing? I ain't been doing a thing, honey. I went shopping for my grandbaby yesterday, y'all. She loved Paw Patrol. And I tried to get her everything Paw Patrol that I thought she would like. Lord, she's so precious. Show me your ways, Lord. Show me your ways. Me and my sister, we planning a trip to Disney World. We planning to take the girls to SeaWorld. I think I told y'all on that other video. I took that other video down, y'all, because it was upside down. So we planning a trip to Disney World. We're going to take them girls to SeaWorld. I'm excited about it, too. But I just can't wait to see the joy in their faces. When they see those dolphins and all that good old stuff. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I got... Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. I'm sorry I flipped y'all over. But I'm so excited about the trip. Hopefully y'all won't flip over again. Oh, I'm so tired. I had to go by the post office. I went by there and dropped her box off today. Y'all hear about that thing going on with them um, college kids getting in that that um getting in that college because their parents paid the money and stuff. I don't think nothing gonna happen to them. I really don't. I think they're going to say, 
Don't y'all do that no more. That's what I think they're going to say. Well, maybe they might slap them twice. Don't y'all do that no more. We understand. I think that's what's going to happen to them. I don't see nothing happen to them. I definitely don't see nothing to them doing nothing to them students. Mm-mm. And I don't see nothing them doing nothing to the parents. That's about the most I think going to happen to them. Now, I could be wrong. But that's what I think. So, anywho, anywho, anywho. We gonna have a, um, golly, what's the exercise place coming here? Well, there's a new gym coming here. Everybody else got it in they city, but we ain't got it, but it's coming here. I don't know when it's gonna be up, but they're working on the building now. It used to be our old Kmart building. But they turned it into an exercise gym. What is that famous exercise gym everybody go to? Everybody be going to that gym. What's the name of it, y'all? Yeah, that's it. I know y'all saying it. I know y'all saying it. But I just can't hear you. But anyway, when they get here, I'm going to join it, y'all. I'm going to crawl in the place, honey, and say, Help! That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna crawl in that place and cry out for help. Lord have mercy. Whew. But I hope everybody's having a great day. It's a sunny day. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. We'll see. Oh, I know I could talk about this here. I want to talk about, um, y'all know this saying everybody got ain't nobody perfect, especially for leaders. When they talk about leaders. When you have like bishops, pastors, evangelists, teachers, especially bishops and pastors, I guess, or preachers, period. When we mess up over and over again, people try to use the excuse ain't nobody perfect. Let me ask y'all some special stuff like um, when we find pastors and bishops and people in the in in um, leadership in the in the church in the body of Christ. When we find out our pastors went and slept with somebody, you know, committed adultery, or evangelist done went out and committed adultery, or minister done went out and committed adultery, and then we try, then those ministers themselves are trying to use the saying. Well, David messed up. Uh, ain't nobody perfect. Let me tell you something. What if you went to go have surgery, right? You go went to have just a minor surgery on your toe. Maybe they need to take your toenail off. And, and they had to put you to sleep to take your toenail off. And baby, when you woke up, one of your eyeballs was gone. And what if that doctor said, you know what, I'm sorry. Ain't, ain't none of us perfect. You mean you don't know a toenail from an eyeball? That's what I'm talking about. There comes a time in the body of Christ, especially leaders. You don't just wake up one day and say, I'm a leader. It's a process to become a leader. It's a process whenever you, okay, you are born a leader. You're born an evangelist. You're born a, a pastor. You are, you, are a, you are born those things. But there's a process. There's a growing process before you actually begin to do that in the ministry, just like those doctors. Those doctors don't just become a doctor overnight. There's a process. There's tests to take. You might fail some. You got to retake them. It's the same thing in the body of Christ. There is a standard for the people of God in the body of Christ. We can't just say, well, um, ain't nobody perfect. We know there ain't nobody perfect. But when you begin to say 
you are a follower of Christ and you got the, the so-called title of a bishop and a pastor and a, a minister in the gospel, there ought to be some things that you, you don't do no more. You understand what I'm saying? So we need to uh, cast away this thing, ain't nobody perfect. That don't, you know what I mean? That that don't qualify for you to say when you're a bishop. If you're a bishop, a pastor, you ought not to be found. The Bible said there's some things we ought not to be found doing because we are a new creature in Christ. You can't tell me you all, you all the way up to being a, a pastor and a bishop or a minister. And you mean to tell me you can't keep your clothes on? You mean to tell me you love money more than ministry? No, there ought to be something God has already delivered and set you free from. How you going to set the captive free if you ain't even free? And then when we find ourselves in these situations, we won't even admit most of the leaders. And I made this comment on uh, what's the name video. She was uh, talking about um, Lord have mercy. They was talking about the situation with, um, am I past? I got to turn around, honey. My hot dogs is down that way. I mean, my pretzels is back that way. I done came the wrong way. They was talking about uh, Pastor John Gray and Minister, I mean, Psalmist. What's the child name that sang that got on, made the video and cussed, their, cussed the church out and everybody out? She can sing. God knows she got a good talent. She can sing. You eat, um, Leandra. They were talking about John Gray and Leandra. And I made the statement and said that John Gray don't even admit that he done nothing wrong. They covered it up. They they going around the bushes. And Le and I think Leandra, the only video I seen her make, she said she don't apologize for what she said. She apologized for how she said it. Mm -mm. When you a follower of Christ, and we when you've done something, I don't even know how you can be a follower of Christ and end up in those type of situations. No, somewhere along the way, you don't drop being a follower of Christ and you still going on. And you still, because sometimes you can be in ministry, God done counsels you and you steady going on. And then when you get things like this happen, then you try to say, well, I, you know, I'm just human or whatever. No, most time these leaders won't even acknowledge they sin. They won't. They'll try to beat around the bush. And say all kinds of stuff. You got to acknowledge your sin, honey, before God can do anything with you. Them folks, them folks don't acknowledge they done nothing wrong, honey. You ought to hear, you ought to hear the stuff they saying. I apologize for how I said, not what I said, or John Gray talking about uh he was in the presence of somebody. No, either you was with the woman or you weren't with the woman. Come on now. The liar will not tarry in the sight of God. That's what the Bible say. That's what the Bible say. If you a leader and you have fallen, there's grace for you. God ain't going to turn you away. But my God, you got to be honest about your sin. You got to be honest about what you did. But what people say, they, gonna, they coming to judgment day. And you talking about I was in the presence of somebody or I don't apologize for what I said, how I said. No, you need to apologize for what you said and how you said it and being in somebody's presence that you didn't have no your business in. That's how you need to say it. Leadership is in a mess, honey. And then you got these these weak pastors, these jellyback pastors that won't even correct their ministers. Won't even correct the people of God. They're scared to correct them. They're scared to say something to them. Sure is, but I tell you what, all of us going to give an account one day. That's why I say go for what you know, honey. You, If, if you're a Christian, you in leadership in the body of Christ, you better... Uh, you better uh, do what the word of God say. You better read that Bible and do what the Bible say. I'm trying to tell you. Because these people here, honey, going to lead people astray. And they're going to have you thinking that you can do all kind of sin. And say, oh, David did it. And think you're going to be all right. The Bible says sin will not tarry in his sight. A lot of people going to. But yeah, like I was saying. A lot of people going to die. Satan got a lot of people deceived thinking they safe, honey, and they is nowhere near God. Mm -mm. I'm telling you, it's the truth.
y'all see that sky and you can look at that sky and you can tell it's getting ready to pull down raining everybody can see it's getting ready to pull down raining honey look at the sky so by looking at the sky and you know it's getting ready to pull down around guess what people getting ready to prepare some people are rushing home right now because they want to what they want to get in before the rain pull down i'm one of them i want to be in the house my camera phone keep turning off but i know it's getting ready to pull down raining because of the sky and that's the same way it is in life y'all the lord is soon to come are you rushing to get ready so you don't get caught in the rain are you rushing to get ready y'all are you rushing to get ready to meet the lord are you rushing to get ready so you don't get caught in the wrath of god prepare yourselves y'all if you're not saved get saved god is willing and waiting he's waiting surrender to him on today you guys be blessed